So for today, I think uh, I didn't think this really needed to be covered, but I have five minutes. So let me just uh, uh, flip through the textbook sections, just uh, highlighting uh, some things that, uh, that, that I think I would uh, ask for your additional attention to as you are reading through the textbook. So um, one is uh, power, which we won't spend a lot of time with. <laughs> so I'm essentially relying on you to just uh, read it and know. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's in section uh, 7.4. And it's uh, really the the main thing that you might have to uh, know and remember in different problem solving is the definition of power. That power is described as um, amount of work done or change in energy. That's the, the physical significance of work. Uh, change in energy per time. So power is rate of ch energy change or rate of work being done. Uh, either is interchangeable. So that's basically it. And we have a uh, power is one of those quantities for which we have a unit, a specific unit for it. Uh, you have a unit of watt named after, I think, the guy who invented the steam engine. Um, and one watt is joule per second. That's the SI unit of power. Uh, it's related to other SI units. And I will almost never use horsepower. But if you see horsepower somewhere, then, you know, look it up, uh, see how it converts to watt. So that's really the thing about power that you should know. Um, in physics of 4B, we do spend a little bit more time with the power because um, there are relationships between circuit elements and circuit quantities and power. In um, physics of 4A, uh, specifying power is often just a different way to give you amount of energy. Um, so, so we won't spend a lot of time on power, but do read the section and know the definition of power so that um, when someone asks you, what is the definition of power, you don't tell them, oh, it's the ability to influence others. I think that was the civics or U.S. government <laughs> definition of power that I learned in high school. Um, but our definition of power is different. Um, it's rate of energy change or rate of work being done, being, being used interchangeably. The other thing is the work, they keep saying energy theorem. It should be really work kinetic energy theorem. Uh, it's uh, one of the few mathematically rigorous thing that uh, that you see in this class. And you um, the hint that this is a mathematically rigorous thing is that there's the word the theorem meaning um, it's uh, something that's mathematically provable. Um, I don't know if this is surprising, but uh, Newton's laws cannot be proven. There can't be any theorem for Newton's second law. It, uh, Newton's laws are uh, better described as postulates or axioms. Those are our starting place. We assume those things so that we can develop a mechanical description and analyze things. Um, the work energy theorem is something that can be proven once you have a definition of work, which means you have definition of force, so you have Newton's laws. And um, I guess I'm a little bit um, ambivalent about the other side of this thing where uh, do you have definition of kinetic energy or is this a way you would derive kinetic energy? Um, my own personal bias is that this is how we derive an acceptable form of kinetic energy. It goes down to really the definition of energy. Um, you might have seen the definition of energy as um, ability to do work, but the truth is energy is an undefined quantity. We or it's not a precisely defined quantity in physics, in science. We define energies or we define expressions for energy in such a way that uh, it, that it will be conserved in all interactions. And um, when once you limit it to mechanical energy, you can't say it's always conserved, but uh, with the mechanical energy, there are still contact uh, parameters you can put around the uh, situations to say, if these criteria are met, then mechanical energy is conserved. So, so that's really the only thing we hold on to for energy. And um, the derivation that they go through for the work kinetic energy theorem is one that's showing, well, 
what form should the expression for kinetic energy have so that um, so that work done transfers to kinetic energy? I guess the way your textbook and really the standard presentation presents it is they introduce kinetic energy first. They give you this as the definition of kinetic energy, which is fine. Um, it's not wrong. <laughs> Once you have accepted this as a definition of kinetic energy, then work energy theorem is, it's a provable theorem that you can prove that, um, so this is how we describe work and um and this is the important thing to note when you have a network being done on an object and when we say network we it's some the work that we associate with the net force so you have to be careful to include all the forces, both the applied force and any other force that you know you would introduce as you do force analysis. So, so when you have a work done that's associated with that net force, and over any um, any finite interval uh, going from point A to point B, you calculate the network, then then. What you find is that the network calculated is equal to the difference between how much kinetic energy the object has at the final point minus the how much of the kinetic energy that object has at point A. And there are some um, some um, um, nuances about the calculus operation here, and I think it uh, um, for at the level of this class, I think I'm fine leaving it here. Uh, so this is the kind of notational abuse that you might see a physicist engage in, um, which is so. So here, you know, this is the expression that comes from uh, just uh, saying so. You know, this being acceleration. This whole thing is the net force. So it's a net force, the product with the displacement. So you have this uh, infinitesimal uh, differential. Um, so you, you have dW is uh, mv dot dv. And, um, and you're trying to integrate, uh, find the antiderivative. And um, the kind of thing that a physicist would be comfortable with saying is, OK, I'm looking for an antiderivative. So I'm looking for a thing where if I take a derivative, I'll get this. So uh, I, so if I have one half m v squared, uh, where v squared <laughs> means, um, um, actually, I think I can even do this. Um, let me, while I'm abusing my notations, let me be even more thorough in that abuse. So. Um, Let's say uh, this is my guess for the antiderivative of that. And if I imagine taking a, just a derivative or differential of this, um, then I would say, okay, one half m, those are all constants. So I have one half m. And okay, these are now my variables. I need to take a derivative. Hmm, they look like a product. So I can probably use a product rule. So let me use product rule. So I have d. Uh, do, do derivative of the first one, uh, product with the second one that hasn't been taken derivative of, and then plus derivative of the second one, or uh, or the first one, that product with the derivative of the second one. And as I was talking about earlier, that product, they commute. So these two are the same thing. So I can just say these two will simplify as two times one of these. And the two cancels this, and I get m. Um, no, let me keep this one. Uh, v dot dv. So oh, this looks same as that. So yeah, this is my antiderivative. And I'm pretty sure I've done something wrong notationally as I'm going through this. <laughs> um, but the reason we engage in notational abuse is because it ends up in correct expression. So so there's some. Um, detail of um, how to handle this uh, calculus of things properly and correctly. And um, for the purpose of this class, we don't really worry about it all that much. Uh, really, the, the 
thing that's important for us is then the result, this uh, um, outcome or the, the thing that's being proven that when you have, uh, uh, that you can draw an equivalence between the network done, as in work being done by all the forces together and the difference in the kinetic energy. Um, and and it's really worth emphasizing to work kinetic energy theorem. Uh, in chapter eight, we are going to be introducing potential energy. And once we introduce potential energy, then you do have to be careful. Um, it, you do have to be careful. So the theorem is proved in the context of where this is a network. So it's a work including even the work being done by uh, conservative forces that we're going to talk about in chapter eight um, as part of this week. So this uh, network includes all that. And um, the energy difference part, it only taught, it's uh, concerned with the kinetic energy, not potential energy, not other forms of energy, just the kinetic energy. And that's not quite the common approach we take later on, especially after we've introduced potential energy. So I want to make sure that you are <laughs> fully aware of the limitation on when this theorem applies. It connects difference in the kinetic energy with the dif with the network being done. So, yeah, that, that, so that's basically it. And oh yeah, and this uh, um, this is the kind of connection of uh, what you see now with what you have seen before. The V squared formula, it's basically, uh, uh, it's equivalent to the work of kinetic energy theorem. You take the V squared formula, multiply it through by one half N, that basically gives you um, what V squared formula uh, you know, was saying before.